What's up my Nabooers? I liked the format last time where I had the little camera going so you can watch me film <laughs> myself while I film for you. So I'm going to uh, cover and introduce, I guess, the Cloud CPM latest updates. So Cloud CPM GUI. Uh, Cloud CPM GUI, you can load it from either the headless or from the channels menu. So you're gonna have the F18 if you have an 80 column card, you can get 80 column or just the regular, okay? So when you first boot up, you're gonna have a empty workspace. And this is something that I covered over in the last video, but I'm gonna go over some of the new features that you're gonna see. Um, so first we can use the joystick to control the mouse as you can see here and I'm going to open up a new window and I can choose here we have regular buttons now before it was just text so I can choose left and right to choose the, uh, the drive or I can use the mouse of course and then up and down as well with the arrow keys will allow you to control the user space so I'm going to hit um, a drive user space one and it's going to load up so this is, of course, where I keep all of my RetroNet stuff. So you're gonna find like my games and demos and all that kind of stuff in here. If you wanna know what drives have what on them, you can go under tools and then there's a summary option here. So you can choose that. So it's gonna save the session, save the information. It's gonna launch summary. It shows you the command line it's launching. And here we go. So this is our summary of all the different drives that you can find. So your C drive is your personal drive. So A drive and B drive with Cloud CPM, it'll get updated as I add new stuff or modify things. So people in the community will send me games and send me things that uh, they want other people to have access to, make it accessible, and I can throw it on these drives and they'll update automatically. So never save any of your local stuff on A or B, as you know. Always save it on C. And then your D drive is updated by um, your, your internet adapter's computer. So you have a storage folder on your computer and that'll be in there. So I'll press spacebar to get back. Okay, so now we're back in the GUI again. Um, I'm gonna show you how you can s launch programs as parameters. So let's close this down and let's load up the first user area. And the reason I'm gonna do that is I'm going to find a file like this fortunes.txt. So I'm gonna select it, and then I'm gonna to go to edit, and I'm gonna say copy. So now that file's in my clipboard. I can paste it to, into another um, user area, another drive if I wanted to copy it. But instead what we're gonna do is, we're going to just do a, a directory on it. Actually, let's do a stat on it. There we go, that's what we'll do. So we'll go up here to stat, and I'm gonna run stat but I have a file in the clipboard. So when I do that, it says to paste the file as a parameter. So if I say yes, it's gonna paste fortunes.txt as a parameter to stat. So this is how you can launch a program as a command line. So I'll say yes, and you're gonna see really quickly before it goes here, there it goes, um, stat and fortunes.txt. So there was our, our command line that was run, and that was the, uh, the output. Now there's also a bunch of associations with files already. So if, for example, I were to scroll down through here and find, here's a file here called sxccp. I also, I think there is one in here for the GUI. Let's see, I think it's called GUI help. There it is, GUI help. So I can click on that. And if I just click the file open and open this txt file, there's an association with it already. My association goes with um, my text reader that I created. Now the text viewer will work with um, 40 column or 80 column. It'll automatically wrap for you. As you can see, it wrapped it. So based upon whether you're in 40 column mode or 80 column mode, the text editor, it's, it works just like more. If you're familiar with Linux command line more, I can hit enter to go line by line, or I can hit space to go the whole line. So this is just information about um, the cloud GUI. So I can hit Q to get out of here or escape or control C. And one of the things I think is really great about these associations is I can create another window here. I'm gonna to go to user area two. And this is wild because I know a lot of you guys like to play with basic and wanna play with basic stuff because it's traditional, right? It's the vanilla CPM. Um, playing with Microsoft Basic back in the day. And of course my favorite is Animal. So I can just click on Animal 
and click on file and open and it's automatically associated um, mbasic with uh, with BAS files. So as you can see, there's a command line there. It's launching animal, and I can start guessing away at some animals. Now, this is kind of neat. Um, let's say you want to get out of this program. Well, we know you can hit Control C, and you can type in the word system. We know you can do that, right? But because it's a CPM, I created shortcuts built into it with command, with uh, the keyboard. So you can actually, at any point in a CPM program, so as long as the program is using CPM, so it's using the BIOS, you can just hit Control G U I, and it's gonna bring you right back into the GUI. So hold down Control and hit G U I while Control is held down, and it'll bring you back in. So that way, if you're in a program that you don't know how to exit, like I, I, the other day I joked and made a video about end sweep. I didn't know how to exit end sweep until GTAMP told me. Um, so you can do that. So anyway, so let's go to the next thing, which is under tools. Here we can have a bunch of different programs that we can run with shortcuts. So summary, the manual, which will tell you all about how to use cloud GUI. Color, which allow you to configure the color of your uh, of your console. Uh, tutorial will give you some information about, it's a graphical little tutorial I created to give you some information about CPM, cloud CPM, who made CPM, Gary Kildall, of course, back in the day. The Retronet chat, so you can go on and chat with others. Telnet is great because you can tell it into a BBS if you want, so you can just launch that. My, uh, Microsoft Basic to launch Microsoft Basic, and of course, Slideshow. So if you run Slideshow, um, if you're not using a computer, you can just hit T8 real quick, and then an T8 will bring you right into Slideshow. T for tools, 8 for Slideshow, and then it'll launch it right away, and you can have some music playing in the background as well as a uh, nice little uh, graphical Slideshow. 8-Bit Abyss, of course, is the dungeon crawler a multiplayer, so you can jump into that if you want. And then we have a shell, which is zero. So let's jump into the shell, because I want to show that to you. So we were just in the GUI, and we just dropped fully into a shell. Now, I chose to not use the regular CCP that um, that CPM ships for. I found this one, which is XCCP, which is really great. And of course you can hit control, control Y will bring you back into the GUI, or control G, control U, control I, remember that. And also you have help X you can type in. If I type in help X, it'll bring up a menu, a manual, sorry, for, uh, for the console. So there we go. So we can go through here and read about the console and the CCP and how it works. So, Another thing we can do while we're in here is there is the ability to use the arrow keys up and down to go through past commands. So if I type in DIR and I already have help X, so there's a buffer. Just like if you're familiar with using Linux or I guess in the Windows command shell as well, you can go up and go back through commands that you've typed in before. Okay, there's also um, completion, which is really nice. So if you're on the user area, Oops, it's not user area. If you want to change users in this C uh, CCP, it's user, so you want the drive, then you want the user number, and then like that, that's it. So we can type in DIR, and we know that in user area one of the A drive, that's where I keep all my stuff, so we're gonna find a bunch of games and things in there. So for example, we have Brick Battle, right? We know it's in there someplace, and well, we can see it. <laughs> but let's say we want to run it. So I can just hit B, R, I, and I could actually hit escape. And it'll finish it for me. Isn't that wild? <laughs> so it's got syntax completion. So if you don't know the full command, but you know part of it, just hit the first few letters and hit escape. So we can run it. Now this is really wild to think of this. Okay, so we were just in Cloud GUI. We dropped to a shell out of Cloud GUI and we navigated through a shell, and now we just launched a game. Okay, so back inside of our Cloud GUI, um, let's see, we can also, what else can we do in here? Oops, I gotta focus on this. So file, uh, you can view the console, you can hit V to view the console, we already were in there already. E, so I can delete files too, so hit D to delete the file that I've selected. It's gonna ask me if I wanna delete it, and I can say yes or no, I'm gonna say no of course. And if I did say yes, the file will be gone off this A drive, at least until the next time I update the, uh, the A drive online, and then it'll get overwritten. So again, don't modify that. Um, on your file new B drive, user area zero. Originally, 
B drive was all MSX ROMs and plenty of them didn't work and plenty of them did work. So GTAMP and I went through a few of them and had a conversation about how to how to sort this directory and this drive a little bit better. So essentially now you have ROM files on your B0. And of course I can launch any of these because we know that these ones work. And as they, as more come, we'll add more of them. Now what's neat about this is I can associate, the ROM files are associated directly with um, the emulator. So if I just click on a ROM file like Goonies, for example, and I just say run, it's going to launch the emulator with Goonies and off we go. Now we just wait to watch it load. There we go. So Goonies is up. Now of course to get back, because the emulator takes up all the memory, there's nothing left. Um, we have to hit F3 to reboot back into MAME. Of course if you're on your real NABU, you would just be pushing that old reset button. So on user area zero, that's where our ROM files are. But if we go into file, new, and then we go to B drive user area one, you're gonna find that there are COM files in there. So um, these are all created by Brian Johnson. He created a library called LibMS LibMSX. So all of these games can be run directly from just a COM file. So Galaga, which works really great by the way, because the old Galaga is a ROM file. I don't know if you remember, but you gotta hold down. Uh, it, it held down the enter key for you, so it fired nonstop all the time. So that was crazy. But um, yeah, I think that you guys are gonna really enjoy this a lot. It's uh, There's a few other options that I'm looking into. Like for example, the settings hasn't been complete yet, but I can make it so you can change the colors and you can change the background colors. You can't put images in the background, of course, the TMS 99, uh, 19A, 99, 18A, whatever it is. It doesn't have enough. It does, it's not. It does, it's not going to work. It's just not going to work. It's, it's going to be way too much work to, to, to have a background of any sort. Um, but the way it is now, I think, is, is, is really fantastic. It works really good. And I think that this is going to make using CPM a lot easier because it resurfaced a lot of programs. Um, specifically, for example, if I go into user area, uh, let's say user area two, we know what that is, user area three. User area three is kind of fun because these, the A drive I find outside of the programs I've created, you'll find there's a lot of um, really old school stuff in here, like Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and, you know, Gorilla. Remember Gorilla from Microsoft Basic, right? And there's a funny game called Happy Face, which is literally just a happy face you can drive around the screen. But, you know, and, and, and like um, Ladder, which is a, a, a text console game, um, probably gonna wanna play that from either a uh, Telnet session, Telnetting into the, uh, the console, or you're gonna wanna play that in 80 column mode. But most of these games are pretty great because they're just so old school. And well, I think I think I saw a river raid there. I don't think that one belongs in here, <laughs> so I'll move that. But that's that's fun. And then if we go back into summary tools summary, you'll notice that we have you know plan plan eighty, which is a spreadsheet, WordStar, all that kind of stuff is on here. So you'll be able to have a lot of fun with uh, with this because before a lot of these programs were hidden away. They're harder to find now. They're much easier to find because you can just access them so quickly by loading up a window and running it.